Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial in rigging. This time we're going to go over how to rig legs. So in the previous tutorial, we went over joints, how to create uh, controllers, and then also how to use constraints. And that's considered FK and that means uh, forward kinematics and forward kinematics means that uh, you can just one impacts the other and impacts the other. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend that you watch that tutorial. Uh, I am going to go a little bit fast on this one because I am going to assume that you do know how to create the joints and how to control them and everything. So right now this is Calico. We're going to be working with her on creating a, a joint chain for her legs and let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to go under rigging. So let's go to rigging and let's go to skeleton, create joints. Let's go to the options. And uh, if this is the first time you're using this, I would highly recommend that you take your short bone radius and change this to long bone. And depending on your character, mine's kind of small according to the grid. So I'm going to change this to 0.3 to 0.3. All right, let's go to the front view. I'm going to click on the X-ray joint. And the first joint I'm going to create is usually the pelvis. This is also known as the root joint. So I'm going to go over here and type in root joint. Root underscore J and T, which stands for joint. Might want to zoom in a little bit just to make sure it is centered in the character. All right, the next one is going to be the hip, which is around here, then her knee, then the ankle, and press enter. All right, of course, as always, let's go ahead and call these hip joint, knee joint, ankle joint. All right. Now you'll notice that um, all of these were created in the origin. So let's grab these guys and find where her pelvis is, which is around here. You might want to turn on x-ray again. I'm going to grab the hip joint and place it where her hip moves. Now you have to think about this is where the joint is going to be. This is where the movement is going to be uh, located. So for example, I the last thing I'd want is to have this joint over here to the front of, of her geometry because that's not really where our skeleton, our real human skeleton is located. Our human skeleton is usually located around here. And then the knee, you want to double check to make sure where that's located. So I'm going to hold down D and just kind of move it. Again, our knee doesn't really bend back here. It bends, the knee joint is basically around here. And holding down D, I'm going to make sure that I go ahead and put this at the ankle. I'm not going to be doing the foot control. That's uh, that's probably going to be a different tutorial. This is just going to be handling um, the leg. Now that I have that, let's go in here. And uh, of course, the first thing we always want to do is uh, make sure that we uh, delete the history, which doesn't really have any. But let's go ahead and delete, center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformations. Again, the translate will remain. That's very important to kind of point it where it is, where it's supposed to be located. And then let's go ahead and go to skeleton reorient joints. Okay. Now this is going to be the left side. So, um, of the character. So I'm going to show you a trick. There's something called modify prefix hierarchy name. And what I'm going to do is just type in L underscore. And when I click okay, you're going to notice that it changes the L hip joint, L knee joint, L ankle joint. That stands for the left side. Why did I do this? Because I want to mirror it to the other side. So let's go to skeleton mirror joints. Let's go to the options. And then, um, you know, we can play around with this, but really what I want is the L and of course the underscore, otherwise it might grab an like ankle and then replace the L with this, but uh, L underscore with R underscore. And we would want to choose Y and Z and apply. So now I've got a mirror joints. It's exactly the same mirrored to the opposite side. Just confirm that that's what it's doing, which it did, which is great. So why did I do this? Because I need two of these chains and I want them to be connected to the root joint. So I'm going to select this one, shift select this one and click under letter P. And then I'm going to grab this one and do the same thing. So now what I have is a joint chain that is uh, going to help my character bend her, her hip, her knee, and her ankle. All right, so far so good. All right, so right now this is considered an FK chain, a forward kinematics chain, which means that whatever I do with this one 
impacts the other one, and so on and so forth. Now, well, the issue with that, though, is that that's not really what we want because if I grab the root joint and I try to move down, for, me, for her to be able to walk, for example, I would have to compensate all the animation with, uh, with this. So then I would have to do this, and then I would have to rotate it, and then it's a whole thing. So lucky for us, they inver invented something called IK, which stands for Inverse Kinematics. So what we're going to do is go to Skeleton, Create IK Handle, and then go to the options. I usually choose Sticky and leave everything as is. And let's go ahead and click where the hip starts and then where the ankle ends. So what we get is this thing called a pull vector. That's what this triangle is. And I also get an IK handle. What's neat about this IK handle is that I can grab it and I can move the ankle around. Plus, I can grab my uh, root joint here and then try to bend her. And you'll notice the difference. One just continues going down without changing shape while the other one stays where it's at, which is the ankle. And that's going to make my life a lot easier. Now there's one step I forgot to make, which is I'm very lucky that the knee is actually pointing the correct direction. So I'm going to undo that. What I'm going to show you is called preferred angle because we already have an angle uh, to this. It automatically calculates where it is. But if you had a straight joint, you have to make sure there's a little bit of a bend before and then you click on the top hip joint and then say select skeleton set preferred angle so at least it knows where it's supposed to bend right so once again create IK handle pelvis here we have one we'll do the other set as well and now we have two great so we're going to name these again because the last thing we want is to have a million I can handle and then we don't know where anything goes. So this is going to be the left underscore foot. Well, you can call it leg. And then I'm going to copy this just because I'm lazy and change this to R. Remove that too. Perfect. Great. All right. So now I can grab this root joint and then I can get her to bend her knees. Now notice that the knees are kind of bending like this, which isn't really ideal. So I need a controller for that. And I also don't want the animators to grab IK handles and, you know, animate on this. That's a really bad idea. So let's create some controllers. So let's grab a circle. The first one I'm going to do is a circle and create one around her body. Like so. Uh, I do V middle mouse and snap so that it stays there. And if you want to, you can shape it so that it looks a little bit more like uh, the character. And I notice when I click and drag, sometimes it'll select the IK handle first, which is very common. So there's a little handy tool up here at the top where it says, hey, do you want to select IK handles, bones, or controllers, or whatever? So I can turn these off. This is based on the hierarchy. So it's going to select IK handles first, right? So here we go. That proves that. So I'm going to turn that off. The second one's going to say, all right, the next thing I'm going to select is joints. And it does exactly that. So turn that off. Now I'm going to be able to select this and no problems. So if you want to, you can shape this in control mode. I just wanted to demonstrate that. And it's always a good idea to kind of shape these uh, objects just so that it, it looks a little bit unique and it's not like a million circles. And it's also easy to select. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna call this the root control. All right, I am not going to delete the, his, the do not center the pivot, right? Because it's already centered at the joint. So, but I do want to delete the history and freeze the transformations. So zeros and no information. Next, I want to create something for the foot. So let's go to curves, create another circle. Circle some my friends. Uh, v, middle mouse and snap to the foot. And then just like before, oops, I got to make sure it's actually in the joint. You know, it's probably can't select a joint because this is turned off. So let me try that again. And there it goes. Now it's working. Great. All right. So let's turn off IK handle. Let's grab controls. And I'm going to shape this like a little bit like a foot. So let's go ahead and bring this in a little bit. Grab these guys. Let's go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to maybe arc this a little bit, bring this out a little bit. So I get a something that looks like, see, I selected joints. Let me turn that off. Maybe this can be moved a little bit. 
So again, I'm trying to create something that um, is going to let anybody that opens this up be like, oh, that must be the foot. <laughs> it's just like that simple. All right, that looks okay. Now, the trick to this though, is that we really don't, it doesn't really make sense to grab the foot and it's gonna feel like it's grounded. So what I'm gonna do is grab the control vertices here, then I'm gonna drag him, oh, missed one, and drag it to the floor, something like that. Now, if I go to object node, you're gonna notice that the manipulator is located at the joint, which is exactly what I want. So now I have a foot control that the, the pivot point is in fact in the joint, which is what I want. I'm gonna bring this out a little bit. All right, so now that I have that, let's go back and delete the history, freeze the transformations, but we are not centering the pivot. All right, this is the left foot control. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna mirror it by going to scale X and changes this to negative one. I'm going to snap it to the joint. Again, turn on join if you want to snap it into the center of the joint. There you go. And then again, we're going to freeze the transformations, delete the history. And then I have some foot controls. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the way we want this to work, again, turn on IK. Uh, I want it to go this direction. So I could just potentially just parent it. I can grab this, select a controller and click P. Um, and actually I need to recall this R before I forget R. There we go. We can also constrain it. So for example, I can take the, the left foot control, uh, select the IK handle and then go to constraint parent options and just make sure that maintain offset is on and add. So what that does is that it adds a constraint to the IK handle so I can move this around and there's no problems which is perfect. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna select the R foot control, then select the R IK handle, and then do the constraint. I just clicked G, which is the, uh, the last command, which was the constraint. All right, it's looking good. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Select the root control, then, I'm sorry, select the controller, then the root control, and then click G, which means that once the animator picks this up, now you can move it. All right, so we've got this working. We've got this working. But now we need to fix the knees. So we're gonna grab another circle. Told you I like circles. <laughs> They're just really diverse. Uh, let's snap it in front of the joint here. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. I'm gonna move this out, scale it. Control vertex, select these guys here. And then I'm gonna scale them down. So it just makes it look different. And I'm gonna call this my left knee control. Again, don't forget to, you can actually center the pivot this one. We don't, it doesn't matter where the pivot is, but make sure you delete the history and freeze the transformation. So we're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna snap it here to where the joint is. And then I could potentially just try to figure out what this is, but I can just zero this out. And again, freeze the transformations. So this is going to be my right knee control. Cool. What is the purpose for this? Well, this is going to control the way the knees are going to be, which direction the knees are going to be located. So for example, what I need to do is grab the IK handle, I'm sorry, grab the controller, shift select the IK handle, and then go to constraint, and there's something called pole vector. And that's gonna force the pole vector to point at the direction of this object. So if I move the knee, over here, you'll notice that the knee is also bending. And so this is very convenient because if I take this and I don't want the knees to be bending a particular way, I can force it a different direction. And now she can dance. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's the little things, guys, that makes this fun. Uh, let's grab the knee control, shift select the IK handle, constraint, pull vector, and then we can test it out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Works like a charm. So if we want the character to move, as you can see, I can drag this around. All right, so let's see what that looks like on the character. So we need to select all of the joints. So you can grab all of this if you want to, but I always recommend that you go to uh, select all by type joints, and then it's going to select all your joints. I mean, you could click and drag, but then you've got, you're selecting other random stuff, which you might not want to do. So you go to select all by type joints, 
shift select a character and then go into skin bind skin now there's no uh, spine or anything this is just an exercise on how to create a leg but just to demonstrate so it's going to look weird her head's going to fly off but i'm going to go ahead and do this we'll just focus on her legs and i can go in and move her leg uh, notice that there is no rotate that's for the foot but if i just hide this I can get the character to look like she's walking very, very easily. Now you're going to notice that there are some um, interesting shapes going on, right? So you'll notice that her legs are looking like emaciated and everything. That's because um, there is something called painted weights, which is a whole different subject that I'm not really going to go into right now. But the point is, is that my character can now be moved around and I can do like a really basic walk cycle. It's a little hard to do a walk cycle without a spine because this character looks really strange, but this should give you an idea of what, how to create a IK legs and how to uh, bind them. Now, usually you do not want, you usually don't want to bind it until you're done with your skeleton. So you probably want to do a spine and all of those other controls. But at the end, this is going to be how you create the legs. So I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about, um, let me just kind of pose her here a little bit. So now she looks like she's dancing a little bit. Cool. So, and her head is freaking me out because it's decapitated, but um, that is how you create IK legs. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll continue on making tutorials about rigging and uh, there's a whole thing about how to clean this up, how to label them, how to color them, so on and so forth. So thank you so much for listening. Let me know if you guys have any questions. If you found this helpful, please like and share and of course subscribe. Don't forget to check out uh, academicphoenixplus.com if you uh, want to get some free downloads and ebooks and a bunch of free videos as well. And I really appreciate your support. I will see you next time.